Hi, my name is Frank D'Alessandro. I'm an attorney with Pine Tree Legal Assistance. This presentation is designed to assist homeowners who are having trouble paying their mortgage or are facing foreclosure. This is a three-part series and it's put on by Pine Tree Legal Assistance and the Maine Housing Counselor Network. And it's been created to help people understand what their options are during foreclosure, before foreclosure, and in the aftermath of foreclosure. Dealing with foreclosure requires you to be persistent and organized. You need to pay attention to every piece of paper you get from the lender, and you need to understand the foreclosure timeline, and you should closely monitor any court deadlines you might have. Finally, you should create a realistic action plan that helps you deal with the problem. This segment is the first in the three-part series, and it deals with the pre-foreclosure process and what you should be doing. First of all, we're going to go over a, couple, a, lot, a number of misconceptions people have about the foreclosure process. Second, we're going to go over foreclosure rescue scams and try to help you avoid making a bad situation worse. And third, we're going to go over what the next steps you should be taking are. A lot of misconceptions around foreclosure deal with the relationship between the lender, the homeowner, and the bank. One of the misconceptions is that the bank will not work with you because they want your house. That's not true. Banks are often willing, in fact, eager to hear from a, a homeowner and try to work out the problem. Second, a second misconception is that you've received a notice of default, so now you will definitely lose your home. That's not true. In fact, you have the ability to file an answer if it does go into foreclosure, and you have often the ability to do a workout to make the mortgage for affordable. Third, another misconception is if you can't make your payments, your only option is bankruptcy or foreclosure. Again, that's not true. One of the things that many clients do, many homeowners wind up doing a workout with the lender or bank to make the mortgage affordable. Another misconception is that if you receive court papers, there's nothing left to do. That's absolutely untrue. In fact, when you receive papers from court or otherwise, it's time to take action, not time to stop. Another misconception is if the court enters a judgment of foreclosure against you, you could go to jail. Again, that's absolutely untrue. You're not going to go to jail because you can't make your mortgage payment or because you face foreclosure, even if a judgment is entered against you. Another misconception is that if you file for bankruptcy, you'll definitely be allowed to stay in your home. Bankruptcy is a valuable tool. It can be a great option for you, and it can help you stay in, in your home, but it's no guarantee that that's what will happen. The, the last misconception people have, and this is shared by a lot of our clients and many homeowners, is that you should do whatever is necessary, no matter what, to stay in your home. That's not always true, and sometimes the best option is to place the house up to for sale and to sell it or to enter into a, another um, arrangement with the bank um, and move from the house. Another very important point to take away from this uh, presentation is you should be very careful if anyone contacts you making an offer to refinance your home. A lot of times People will get in trouble, will fall behind in their mortgage payments, and then they will be contacted by a third party, sometimes usually unsolicited, making an offer to help them out of this situation. Remember, if the deal sounds too good to be true, it probably is. You should not sign another uh, an agreement unless you have somebody review it with you. You should contact a housing counselor or an attorney for help. The last point is, okay, okay. The last point is that you need to develop an action plan, and then you need to stick with it. Another one 
of the um, presentations in this series is how to develop an action plan. And you should watch that um, presentation so you learn what you need to do. Okay, but the key points are you need to get your documents together, all the documents you have concerning the mortgage. You need to do a monthly budget and you need to be honest with yourself because one of the things you need to do if you're going to do a workout, you have to make sure that the new payment amount is affordable. It doesn't help to enter into a new arrangement where the new payment amount is not affordable. So you need to do that budget. You also need to do, one of the other things you need to do is get your credit score. And there's a lot of ways to do that and they should not cost any money. Okay, you're entitled to um, get a, a copy of your credit report once a year and then for a small sum on top of that you can get your credit score. It's important to do that. Okay. After you fall behind in your mortgage payments, you may be contacted by a third party offering to solve your problem. Remember, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Don't be duped by promises to save your home. There's some things you should be careful about. If it's a high interest rate, over 8%, if you're rushed through the closing, if the terms of the loan change from the time you apply for the loan to the time you close on the loan, or if you're required to make a balloon payment, which is a lump sum, large lump sum payment at the end of a certain period of time, usually a year or two. You should be very careful of signing any documents and you shouldn't enter into a new refinance agreement unless you have a housing counselor or an attorney go over it with you. Don't borrow trouble. Don't make a bad situation worse by entering into a bad refinance of an existing loan. Be persistent and diligent. Okay, a lot of times um, you know, you'll call for help with either a housing counselor or an attorney. They won't get back to you right away. Give them a call back, okay? There is a huge foreclosure problem in the state of Maine right now. You need to be persistent. Everyone is working hard, but you need to be persistent, diligent, and follow up. And you need to remember you're not alone. In 2008, there were over 5,000 foreclosures filed in the state of Maine, and the number is growing. Okay, you're not alone. This is not something to be ashamed about. This is something to deal with. And if you're persistent and diligent, you can at least do the best you can and make a bad situation better than it otherwise would be. So what you should do next is you should make an appointment with a housing counselor or an attorney to go over your case. After you've done what I've just told you, gathered your documents, made a budget, got your credit score and gone over your credit report. At the end of this presentation, you'll be provided contact information for member organizations of the Maine Housing Network. You should look at that information and contact the agency that's closest to you and try to make an appointment as soon as possible. Remember, the sooner you try to get help, the sooner you do get help, the better. Don't wait.